Hey everyone, welcome to another session of VWO webinars where experts in digital marketing, experimentation, data, and product share their trade tips and inspiring stories for you to learn from. I am Shanaz, Marketing Manager at VWO. For those of you who do not know what VWO is, VWO is a full funnel A-B testing, experimentation, and conversion rate optimization platform. Today we have with us Ishan Gol, Lead Data Scientist, and Anshul Gupta, Senior Data Scientist at VWO, to answer all questions MAB. If you could please turn on your camera, Ishan and Anshul, so that the audience can see you. Hi, Shanaz. Hi. Hey, Shanaz. Well, hi, audience. Thanks for doing this, Ishan and Anshul. I'm sure there'll be a plethora of insights to take back from this session today. Uh, before I pass on the mic to you guys, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in from all over the world and inform you that we will be taking up questions at the end of the session. Uh, so everyone, please feel free to drop your questions at the at any given point during the presentation and we'll take them up at the end. With that, guys, the stage is all yours. Let's start. So uh, today's webinar is basically about what are multi-armed bandits. And uh, I know this sounds like uh, a very very complex name that doesn't suggest anything about digital marketing or A-B testing. So I think we should start by first talking about what actually are multi-armed bandits and where does the name comes from. So uh, basically multi-armed bandits were these uh, casino machines that you would see in Vegas and uh, casinos in Vegas. And uh, the idea was that you had these multiple machines and uh, every machine had uh, some fixed probability that you'll win the jack jackpot. So, uh, and it was different for every machine. So say the first machine has uh, a 10% uh, jackpot probability, the second machine has 20% and the third machine has 30%. The idea was that uh, you didn't know these probabilities and you had to pull a lever in uh, expectance of a, jack, uh, of a jackpot. And uh, for one coin, you could just pull the lever once and then you had to like try out different machines and then settle on a machine that you felt was the luckiest machine for you. So they were multi-armed bandits basically, and uh, when you won, you won the jackpot. Uh, now the question comes like, how did these become analogous to statistics and in digital marketing? So uh, why are we talking about them basically? Uh, so basically multi-armed bandits uh, formalized in statistics into a formal algorithm that was a minor variation in A-B testing. So to uh, recap, I would also tell you what A-B testing is basically. A B testing. Uh, so, suppose, uh, so in the digital marketing world, A B testing is being used. Uh, yeah, Anshul, uh, we can like uh, go back to this. So, okay. in the digital marketing world, A B testing is uh, being uh, A B testing is basically if you have a website and you have uh, you want to experimentally improve the website for the best conversion rates, then what you do is you create the way a variation of the web page and then you use an A B testing engine to test out which one has a higher conversion rate. And if your variation wins over the uh, previous web page you have, you can deploy the new variation. So it is basically a formalized experimental testing method that equally uh, distributes traffic between your two variation, 50%, 50%, and then tells you in the quickest amount of time possible if your new variation is better than the previous variation in terms of how much the users are converting. So why we are talking about MEBs today because at VWO, we are now introducing MABs, which are minor variation of AB tests, but have unique use cases that we'll discuss on the next slide. And I would also like to point out that uh, Anshul uh, is the one who has implemented and uh, developed this algorithm for MAB at VWO. So yeah, moving forward, we can move forward and uh, I'll uh, further uh, discuss on the differences between uh, AB tests and MABs. So, Basically, the subtle difference between A-B test and uh, MAB selection process is something that you can see on the image on the left. Basically, A-B test distributes equally, uh, distributes all your traffic equally, and then for a specified amount of time till it reaches statistical significance, uh, it tests out the three variation by equally diverting the traffic towards them. And then at the end of the test, which is at uh, somewhere in week five in this figure, you decide which one was the best variation which was giving you the highest conversion rates and then you deploy those uh, conversion rates uh, the, uh, then you deploy that best performing variation for uh, the future whereas mabs are slightly different what mabs do is uh, rather than keeping a uniform uh, equal traffic distribution 
MAB is uh, slowly, uh, they divert more and more traffic to the winning variation. So as MAB has become sure that option A is the one which is performing the best out of the three, then MAB start diverting more traffic towards those and they save uh, conversions for you while you are running the test. So, uh, so if you see this image uh, on the left where uh, there is AB, te uh, AB testing contrasted on, against bandit selection, you are able to see that as you progress through the test, um, uh, the proportion of visitors that are allotted to option B and option C reduce down and the proportion of visitors that are allotted to option A remain uh, increase. And um, after week five, uh, when we reach uh, statistical, when we are sure that option A is better, then you deploy it to the whole traffic. So uh, that is the central idea behind an MAB why it relates to the slot machines because such an algorithm is what you use to win at the slot machines so uh, the thing is uh, this basically makes it seem like mabs are absolutely better than ab tests because uh, they help you save conversions during the test whereas uh, we need to uh, whereas we need to clear the air that uh, there are some pros of mabs and some pros of ab testing and the major limitation that mabs bring in is that uh, you cannot be entirely sure that these results are future proof that is the major limitation so if you are looking for statistical significance what we say and when we say statistical significance actually what we really really mean is that the results that we got on the specified period in the test they remain valid for the future as well after the tests end so that thing remains so that is that assumption that future proofing is very well tested with ab testing because we equally distribute the traffic so we learn equally well about all the three variations whereas uh, mab algorithms are less future proof that way because uh, what happens is that uh, if option c is performing not very well in the starting it slowly diverges and doesn't uh, give a lot of focus on option c and it might be that later option c was actually working better but it did not get much traffic to prove itself so in that way, um, MABs are uh, MABs are more focused towards in the campaign conversions, whereas AB tests are more focused that uh, you might lose conversions while you are running the campaign, but uh, you'll be sure that you are deploying the best variation in the future. So uh, pointing out the pros and cons more clearly, AB tests uh, have higher loss con uh, loss of conversions during the test because you are diverting so much traffic to these uh, suboptimal variations, they are faster to reach statistical significance. So we need to realize that uh, statistical significance depends on uh, being sure about all the variations that are running in the test and not that uh, you're just sure about the one, about the conversion rate of option A. So that is why MABs take a longer time to reach statistical significance, whereas AB tests are faster to reach statistic, uh, statistical significance. And the core ideology and the core objective behind MABs and AB tests is actually different. So even with this very minor variation, the core ideology is different because um, AB tests focus on scientifically learning which variations perform better and then deploying them to the future. So basically it's very important for them that they learn well. Whereas MABs focus on saving the conversions while you are running the test. They don't worry about um, whether on the, in the future those things will be valid or not and as we go further and we'll see that uh, these translate to very different business use cases so yeah Anshul we can go to the next slide so I am going to talk about uh, the business use cases of MAB and uh, where essentially you should uh, think of in terms of MABs and not AB tests so one of the major uh, major applications of MAB is short-lived campaigns. Like suppose you are having a flash sale on your website. So the thing about flash sales is that whatever variations you try out for, say it's a three-day flash sale, whatever variations you try out for those three days, they don't. It doesn't mean a lot that uh, what whoever comes out to be the winner, you are never going to deploy it for the indefinite future. What matters is that through the flash sale, you get the higher, highest conversion rate possible. After the flash sale ends, it would anyways be not useful, whatever you learned in that period. So essentially, if you look at it that way, A-B testing is an experimentation tool that tells you what is better for the future, whereas uh, 
MABs are an optimization tool that just helps you save conversion in that short-lived campaign and it's uh, not restricted to just flash sales if you think about it uh, you can even think of push notifications for that matter like if you have to push a set of notifications to your uh, user set and you have two variations that you can try and you want to see which one elicits a higher conversion rate then maybe you can uh, bucket your uh, suppose you are uh, sending out thousand variations you can bucket them in 100 each see the response of the first 100 then divert more traffic to the winning variation in the next 100 and so on so uh, because push notifications as well like they are not something that you are going to deploy on the infinite indefinite future so such type of short-lived campaigns and um, if you think about it one more interesting use case i'll tell you suppose you have a slot on your website that is um, that you have to give to some third party uh, some third party uh, software to like put ads uh, so you have to decide from multiple ads that which ads would do you place on that slot and suppose those ads are continuously like old ads are going out and new ads are coming in something like the bidding algorithm of google so in that case basically what happens is because new ads keep coming in you really don't want to a b test those different ads against each other what you really want is you want an mab that continuously looks at the set of ads that it currently has and then diverts the traffic to the best winning variation and as new ads keep coming in traffic gets diverted to those new ads so whenever um, any variation so you should think of it in this way whenever any variation has a very fixed uh, visitor attention budget available to them you should start thinking of mabs because uh, their future learnings won't help you a lot and hence you should not waste your conversions on ab tests so that was a major use case of mab but there are some other use cases as well like uh, one i would like to tell you is when you have multiple variations and uh, multi by multiple variations what i mean is that uh, suppose you have hundreds of variations that you create which generally come up in the case of a multivariate test which i'll tell you in just the next three four minutes what a multivariate test is so suppose you have many variations and you want to figure out what are the best variations in those and uh, say if you have uh, 20 variations and you go on dividing all your traffic in 20 buckets for all those variations then the lowest performing variations will be will perform very badly and cost you a lot so essentially what uh, digital marketers want in this scenario is that uh, they run a test with multiple variations and it quickly converges towards the three four variations that are the best performing and those variations that do not make sense at all they do not get traffic so they get eliminated very quickly so that is another use case of mab and uh, where this use case comes in very specifically is a multivariate test so for those who are not aware of what a multivariate test is i'll give you a quick idea basically suppose you have a web page in simple ab tests you create a variation of the entire web page whereas in multivariate test you have different widgets on the web page and so suppose there is a banner there is an image there is an explanation so you create variations of uh, all the different widgets so you can put in five variations of the banner you can put in three uh, variations of the image you can put in four variation of the uh, variations of the explanation and what a multivariate test does is that it takes a combinatorial um, combinatorial uh, all possible combinations of these three so five into three into four that translates to 60. so you realize how quickly the number of combinations bloated up to 60 and you can probably intuitively understand that uh, a bunch of these combinations would not make sense so in those cases you would want to run an mab so that the competition the competition remains just between the four or five variations that are making sense four or five combinations that are making sense and all the other 50 55 get eliminated and weeded out pretty quickly and don't waste your conversions so that's one use case of it and uh, and sometimes uh, sometimes it's just for saving conversions so you might have a usual ab test and you would want you might want to just save conversions on the low performing variations and you are in no hurry of getting statistical significance so people in that case to just save conversions they uh, run an mab rather than an ab test so that's the business use cases largely of um, mab what will be moving further and anshul will be telling us that uh, the algorithm that we at vwo have deployed for um, for mabs and they are specifically we have built that algorithm for uh, some advantages and uh, so that it performs the best for multivariate tests and 
also yeah please anshul thank you ishan yeah uh, now i'll talk about uh, basically the core cool components that involved in building of this multi uh, multi arm algorithm that we built at vw so the first one is weight initialization uh, weight updation traffic speed computation and exploration factor i'll be talking about only the high level overview about these core components and but if you want to get a detailed understanding of what is the mathematics behind it you can uh, refer to this article which will share basically this after this talk and you can just read more about it that what really goes into it so let's first start with weight initialization so suppose that this is your website layout and it has two section first one is shirt section and other is trouser section and there are multiple shirts that you have for each section and trousers now what we uh, goes into these weights is that first is the content weight essentially we define that for every variant of a shirt and a trouser we are setting up a weight and what is the meaning of this weight is essentially is that you are trying to quantify that uh, what is the contribution of uh, a particular variant of a shirt let's say is towards the conversion rate of this entire website's layout so you can have so what uh, in case of content weights for every individual shirt and trouser you will have a weight associated to it and eventually with this algorithm you will try to learn that uh, how much is this weight contributing towards your website's conversion rate and the second part is the content interaction weight which basically takes into account this paired uh, weights is because what can happen is that maybe your shirt and trouser uh, in trouser in the common words but when they are paired together they kind of like killing it and uh, they resonate well with the audience so that is why these uh, content interaction weight we are keeping into uh, account and uh, the content interaction weight basically would come only in the case of multivariate test only so the the basic idea is that this algorithm really has a pronounced effect when you are comparing it with a multivariate test in case of ab there would only be content weights so this is about weight initialization uh and say all these things are all these weights that we are trying to learn are in the form of a distribution so in case of less data we are trying to account uh, the uncertainty also that the with with less data they would be a highly uncertain and we, as we get more data and the basic the uncertainty would be really less and would be more sure about that how much these weights are contributing towards the layout conversion rate moving on now that we have understood that how the what all these weights are uh, let's try to understand that how these weights are really learned so we use a combination of this algorithm called assumed density filtering and message passing algorithm that we use uh, to make uh, learn the weights of distribution of these weights i'll just give you a brief idea about what goes like uh, what is this algorithm about just an intuition around it but you can definitely go back to the, go to that article which uh, help article and see what is essentially the maths around it so this is called a essentially a factor graph and the first layer we have all the weights that uh, are, that we have learned Uh, in the previous slide and uh, what we are doing is that we are trying to combine it together and eventually by applying a certain set of equations and then we are getting a layout conversion rate distribution which is this t uh, node and here what we do is that we combine it with the, the response that a visitor has given to that layout it can be a conversion non conversion and uh, then we basically get a learn distribution which is called a posterior and then we uh, perform a backward pass and uh, obtain the posterior for our weights also so through a combination of this forward pass and backward pass we learn the posteriors of our weight essentially our learning of weight is happening this way now this learning of uh, this algorithm is just one way there are other algorithms also like markov chain monte carlo and variation based but uh, they are computationally intensive and the reason why we have we are using this algorithm for essentially its three aspect first one is that uh, uh, it is really like once we have defined the equations it is pretty straight forward to implement and uh, that way it makes it makes it really manageable the second one is that uh, this algorithm uh, this, uh, this algorithm does not really provide us any surprises that uh, uh, if the way it is meant to work it is working that way 
Uh, and third one is that uh, it is really able to scale well for large amount of data. Uh, that is essentially the essence of using this uh, uh, algorithm. Now, moving on, uh, once we have learned the weight, how are we going to use this to decide that which variation to show to a visitor? Then here comes Thompson sampling. That's an algorithm which was built in 1993 by William Thompson uh, for performing linear clinical trials. So the core idea behind this is that when you have less data, towards exploring a lot of variations. Uh, and as you get more data into the test, you start to exploiting whatever behavior, like whichever variation is leading, you start showing more uh, uh, that variation to a lot number of visitors. So this gradual shift from exploration to exploitation uh, can be done really well with Thompson sampling algorithm. Uh, moving on, uh, now this uh, this whole nature of this exploitation and exploitation really works is that uh, for any system to really adapt to a changing environment, it always has to make a balance between these exploration, exploration and exploitation strategy. So. How this exploration exploitation strategy works in like uh, in our system? Uh, we use a, a a basic adaptation of uh, Thompson sampling only. That like let's say for a layout, we have a certain set of weights associated to it. For let's say that layout one and layout two, we have W1, W2, and W2 and W3. And there is a possibility that weights can be common among layouts. So what we do is that we compute a score, which is the layout score, and that is done by performing a sample from distribution of a weight one all the weights and then we sum up together and then we find out that which layout is leading and that basically uh, a winner which is the winning layout and this simulation we perform a uh, several number of times to obtain essentially a traffic split that we have to dedicate towards like for a party until the next update of weight happens through our algorithm of assumed density filter so uh, at a particular time, any traffic split combination computation happens by performing the simulation and uh, we eventually get that through this algorithm, we get proportion of times that layout one is winning and proportion times layout two is winning. And this is how we get a traffic split. Uh, um, this is how traffic split computation really happens. Uh, moving on. Now comes the important part that to, to make our algorithm, any algorithm, work in a non-stationary environment because what can happen is that uh, the possibility that what is leading today may be lagging tomorrow. So, uh, and what Thompson sampling done, does by default is that it only explores at the time when the data points are really low, but when the test gets a very large number of data, then it completely goes into an exploitation mode. And eventually at that time, if another variation starts leading, then if we, used, if we were to apply a classical Thompson sampling approach, then it won't be able to figure out that it, this variation has started leading now. And in that case, we explicitly add a uh, exploration factor to, our, to the traffic, which is uh, given by Thompson sampling algorithm. And uh, we currently we keep a 10% complete exploration factor right from the starting so that at any point in time later on, uh, things change, conversion rate, what is happening like earlier, which is uh, have changed, like one variation is uh which was lagging behind that uh, is started leading now so our algorithm is able to adapt to that non-stationary environment so uh, i would uh, i would that, like to add some yeah. intuition to that exploration part actually that might help sure. people understand better so suppose you have uh, five variations and suppose uh, your variations are set up in a way that uh, your customers prefer some variations in the morning whereas some variations in the evening and if we start the test in the morning, it'll naturally be preferring uh, a few of uh, those morning variations, and then it'll be biased towards those morning variations. It'll divert all the traffic to those morning variations. What this exploration factor lets us do is that when the evening comes and the other variation starts to uh, start to perform better, that is the time this exploration factor helps us guide the major amount of traffic to those evening performing variations. So that is the reason that we never cut out this exploration factor ideally to zero. So this exploration factor remains fixed so that we can detect changes like these. So yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, moving on, uh, here comes the another part. Now we have implemented MEB and 
it is dynamically changing the traffic what happens because of that by nature it is adding a certain bias into the system because of which we can never perform a statistical analysis which exactly the like the if we take an example what ishan has mentioned that our morning users what will happen because mab is directing a traffic to a winning variation which is performing which is leading at a particular time now it, there is a possibility that one variation will have a lot more number of morning visitors which is why we can never really come it won't be an apple to apple comparison between the two variation if we measure their performance and mab inherently create a bias so if you would go to any platform it would really say that you can never perform a statistical analysis when mab is uh, run so uh, just to so what we try to do is that how in an mab report we try to ensure that how can we reduce this bias to really perform in whatever visitors uh, a statistical test so we apply, applied a really simple heuristic uh, and because mab is changing the traffic split we are not able to that is why a bias is being created so we ensured that the uh, to an equal proportion of traffic between all the visitors so that uh, this bias can be reduced how we do that is that the suppose that a multi arm bundle algorithm has uh, detected computed a traffic split of 70% and 30% now what we will do we will take the minimum of the traffic split which is 30% and uh, we perform a bernoulli trial bernoulli trial you can think of like doing a uh, doing a coin toss where the probability of heads is 30% so what we are doing is that every time a visitor comes becomes part of a test we'll toss a coin whose probability of success heads is 30% and if head comes we'll mark it and uh, this is this will ensure that variation a and variation b the number of visitors that are going in variation a and variation b will always be in a proportional manner like equally uh, like 30% and 30% and then by performing a statistical analysis we will use only the marked visitors so if you will look like uh, Uh, any statistical report whatever we are that we show on our platform uh, all these metrics will remain valid because the bias is not there now each variation has somewhat equal um, proportional equal number of visitors so that's how this is more of like an add on feature that you can use because uh, traditionally like in mab reporting they are not meant to take any insights from it you are not meant to take any insights from it you only have for what your objective should be that you want to maximize number of conversions till the time your the test is running now this is just an add on feature that uh, at any point in time whatever visitors that you have you can perform like a statistical analysis which will remain valid and uh, you can use uh, for your uh, basically purpose uh, ishan do you want to add anything on this part so uh, interesting yeah i would like to add a bit of uh, discussion there that why have we added this uh, statistical analysis heuristic essentially um, mabs were never meant to attain statistical significance that was uh, so when you think about those slot machines you really didn't care about the fact that which machine is actually generating a higher amount of jackpots what you really really cared about is that if you took 20 coins from the counter you want to make the best jackpot that you can in those 20 coin coins so essentially mabs were never concerned about statistical significance but we realized that uh, in a lot of ab testing scenarios as well you might be wanting to do actually both that you might be wanting to save the conversions while the test is going on as well and you might want to get some statistical significance even if it is relatively delayed so we added this heuristic specifically uh that uh, that lets us actually calculate uh, statistical significance although slowly there is a trade off clearly that uh, it won't be as fast as an ab test but it does calculate statistical significance for you so yeah yeah so any time whenever this test is performed you won't be making any wrong conclusion like if you would have used an entire set of visitors from an mb and perform a statistical test here you are taking a subset of visitors which is why it would be slow to reach if you if you are looking for statistical significance but uh, because it's act using only a subset so it will take a lot of time yeah that is about yeah. it uh moving on so pros and cons of our algorithm ishan would take that yeah so uh so i uh, i would like to discuss briefly our choice of algorithm you would 
definitely uh, find a lot of MAB algorithms and MAB algorithms can be very simple. So like uh, for uh, people who have run tests on VWO before, they must be aware that we show chance to beat control and chance to beat all as well. So essentially chance to beat all. The one of the simplest MAB algorithm is where we take the CTBA values in the test currently at that point and we distribute the traffic based on the CTBA values. So that will be the simplest MAB algorithm that uh, we can create, but we didn't choose to do that. We created a, a much more uh, a much more advanced Bayesian algorithm and uh, the advantage, the major advantage of that algorithm is that it helps. Uh, we realize that a major use case would be multivariate testing and uh, our, um, our MAB implementation when you use it with the MBTs, they are super fast compared to uh, like normal uh, normal MAB algorithms. And I'll tell you the reason for that. So the reason for that is that uh, when we create an MBT, like I just told you five banners, five variations of banners, four variations of the photos and three variations of the explanations, then what happens is you get effectively you get 60 combinations. And uh, what a usual AB test would do is create 60 buckets of visitors for all those 60 combinations. And uh, similarly, even in a, a usual or traditional MAB algorithm would do that. So if you have say 60,000 visitors and it creates 60 buckets out of those. So basically that's thousand visitors in every bucket and every bucket is learning independently. What our algorithm identifies is that uh, suppose there is this banner variation called welcome that is showed with uh, four into three, 12 different combinations. So essentially like if we have five banners, four images and uh, three explanations, then you can realize that that one banner welcome will be showed with in 12 combinations. So what our algorithm does is that it learns about that banner welcome collectively from those 12 combinations. And that is what uh, makes our algorithm so fast. So that is one advantage of uh, so our, algorithm. It is like our algorithm is exploiting the structure of uh, the entire setup, which is like yeah. because welcome is being repeated from in different different layouts. It is able to learn from the response of all of those layouts. Right, right, essentially. And uh, this technique uh, of learning uh, by defining similarities of, uh, between different things. This in uh, hardcore uh, machine learning, it's called ma uh, matrix factorization. So when you have an uh, uh, when you have an exponential explosion, combinatorial explosion of the number of values, these matrix factorization techniques help you define that. Okay, this is similar to this. So essentially, what we said here was that all the times that welcome comes up as a banner, it is one similar thing. So that is what helps us uh, reduce the complexity so much. So if welcome was performing very different in the 12 combinations, our assumption, our MAB algorithm won't perform as good. But we tested this out as well and our assumption that welcome has a specific content weight. So you can like uh, go back to thinking about the content weight and content interaction weights. So that is where our algorithm actually comes out to be uh, better. So uh, this was uh, one advantage of our algorithm. Anshul, do you want to add anything? No, no, that is all. So that was one advantage here. I had put up a green thumbs up there, but I don't know why it is not showing up for some reason. But anyways, so yeah. uh, oh, it does. So there is one disadvantage also of our algorithm. That is that uh, if you remember, we were talking about that 10% exploration heuristic, right? That lets us uh, decide in the evening. That lets us know in the evening that tides have turned and now different variations are performing better. So that has one major disadvantage also that if that does not happen, if your best performing variation remains the best performing variation, then uh, due to that 10% heuristic will be diverting 10% traffic to suboptimal variations. So you'll be able to max out only at 90% of that best performing variation. That is a difficult choice we had to make, but uh, we, uh, we realized that if we consider all use cases, it is better to put that 10% heuristic and in general, it will perform better because patterns in the background often change over time. So yeah, these were some pros and cons of our algorithm. Yeah. Anshul, do you want to add anything there? No. Uh, no, uh, nothing as such. Cool. Cool. Cons and there's only one part that, yeah, so uh, only this part, which I already like covered also that uh, 
algorithm really helped us to scale. Uh, there are other algorithms also which you can use, like in a similar fashion, you can put up the structure and uh, which is like Markov in Monte Carlo and variational based. It's just that they are computationally pretty expensive. And this is because there are only analytical equations are involved here. Uh, you are able to perform learning really fast here, and that is in, too in a deterministic fashion. So what we have seen so far is that there are no surprises that we get that you could get because of those algorithms that uh, is, uh, because Marco Jean Monte Carlo is there known for things like it goes into some areas where solution do not in, exist and the your algorithm completely breaks. So something as such, there's no surprises we have seen in this algorithm. So yeah, pretty much working fine. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, Anshul has extensively ran simulations on a lot of use cases and we have gauged and tested out the performance of our MAB algorithm for uh, this thing. So yeah, currently uh, it is uh, in early access and people who are interested can uh, like uh, yeah, reach out to us and stuff as well. But yeah, we'll be releasing it full force. So yeah, Anshul, we can move to the next slide, I guess, yes. before we close. So uh, before we wrap up, we would uh, like to once uh, in detail re revisit the benefits and the trade-offs of A-B tests and multi-armed bandits so that you can make an informed decision on which campaign do you really, really want to run. So if you talk about the total conversions from the test, uh, total conversions in the test period I'm specifically talking about, you'll have higher number of conversions in multi-armed bandits naturally because you are diverting more traffic to the winning variation. In A-B tests, you'll end up having lower number of conversions. And uh, if you talk about use cases with uh, many variation, then A-B tests will be like really, really slow. So if you have many variations or MBTs, then A-B tests will take a lot of time just because there are so many buckets they are distributing traffic into. Whereas multi-armed bandits will be very quick to ignore all the suboptimal ones and just pick out which are the four or five best, uh, best competing variations and just uh, run an A-B test on those but run practically an A-B test on those four or five best performing variations. So MA, uh, multi-armed bandits are uh, very, uh, give you very quick conversions in those cases. Then A-B tests actually require you manual, uh, require manual decision making in the sense that you'll have to monitor the metrics and eventually take a decision on which variation to deploy. Whereas multi-armed bandits are not experimentation tools, they are optimization tools and you need to think about this very carefully with multi-armed bandits, you'll be giving a decision capability to the algorithm to actually divert your traffic based on the results, based on the learning that that algorithm has. So in multi-armed bandits, you don't need to make any intermediate decisions. You just need to set it and forget about it type of a test where you just uh, deploy all the variations and then let the algorithm just handle it and get you the best conversions possible. Finally, future stability of insights. If we talk about if you have to deploy one of those variations for the indefinite future, then A-B tests are better because they test all the variations equally and then they make an informed decision. So statistical significance is obviously better in A-B tests and uh, hence future stability of those results will be valid. MAB's future stability won't be there because naturally they are not made for that purpose. They are made for a fixed time campaign and you optimize those conversions, get the highest conversions and you uh, abandon the test sort of a thing. And uh, time to statistical significance with A-B tests would be lower. Uh, so naturally you are sending out an equal traffic split. You are spending more conversions in a way, more conversion loss. So you'll get statistical significance quickly. In multi-armed bandits, uh, there is in multi-armed bandits, I'm sorry, there is a, uh, an error in this slide okay so uh, in multi arm bandit yeah. it's actually higher time to statistical significance is higher and uh, uh, so uh, it takes more it takes longer and uh, in detection of changing conversion rates actually so this is that case with morning and evening variation and uh, so if uh, suddenly the patterns change the tides change in the background and some and the bad performing variation starts to perform better suddenly then uh, A-B tests would be able to detect it earlier, although they won't do anything about it. Let me be very clear. They'll detect it very quickly because they have an equal traffic split. So they'll quickly detect that this variation is now performing better, but they'll still divert 50% traffic to both these variations. Whereas when you talk about multi-armed bandit, suddenly the variation that was performing better first 
now has a lot of traffic and the variation that was performing worse has very less traffic so if that worst performing variation starts to perform better then it'll take a lot of time for that variation to nudge the algorithm that oh wait give me more visitors give me more visitors so that i can show you that i can perform better because it won't be getting any visitors so uh, so this detection of changing conversion rates would be lagged in multi arm bandwidths but whatever changes they detect they'll be actively doing something about it and saving you conversions so yeah these are largely the trade offs and benefits uh so yeah anshul if you have anything to add there no i think it's pretty much basically the sum you summarize it well the difference between the two uh yeah we have this starts pretty much it we have do we have any questions so far can i see can and uh, yeah to conclude uh, we are in early access right now and we'll be releasing it for uh, full access in a while so anyone who is interested in mebs can uh, contact us so yeah and any question all right uh, ishan and anshul that was uh, that was really insightful thank you for that presentation i'm sure uh, the audience did find it super super insightful and especially those database those stats that you uh, that you highlighted so thank you for that we do have quite a few questions but due to the paucity of time i'll uh, pick up some of them and see how many of them we can answer uh, those questions that we don't pick up please feel free to connect uh, with ishan or anshul on linkedin and they'll answer your questions there so uh, starting off uh, we have a question from uh, saurabh abichandani uh, saurabh asks for mab what is the recommended size of data to ensure meaningful tests for mab what is the recommended size of uh, data to ensure meaningful tests so uh, that is uh, so i'm so first i'm assuming uh, that uh, by data you mean the number of visitors uh, and uh, not the number of variations but uh, i personally anshul what do you feel i think uh, mabs can yeah actually, actually, like, this is what the benefit yeah this is what the benefit of mab is that you do not there's no such thing as minimum number of visitors that uh, it should need in like in case of ab test to make meaningful insight around it uh, in mab you can start like with zero visitors and the way it's going to work is that it's going uh, like if you are implementing thomson sampling only uh, in starting it's going to distribute traffic equally by nature of uh, setup and as your test uh, gains more visitors whichever variation is performing well it starts directing that traffic and maybe algorithm by design that uh, will start directing that traffic to that winning variation so i don't think that as such any minimum number of visitors are required in an mb yeah because we are not reaching statistical significance even for very small number of visitors so if you have in all 10 visitors and uh, even with that you can run an mab and try to maximize your conversions so even it will be learning slowly but it will be saving you it will be trying to save you some conversions over an ab test so yeah all right uh, i hope that answers your question uh, saurabh uh, if not you can follow up with us on linkedin yeah uh yinking kwan and mike and ko i i hope i am pronouncing your names correctly uh we will be sharing the uh, the recording as well as the slide over email to you uh, in the next 24 to 48 hours and it will also be posted on uh, vwo on vwo.com/webinars uh, so i hope you can go and check it out there in case you missed anything from the webinar due to poor connectivity or uh, problems like that um next question is from ayula josephus uh ayola asks how do you see mab test being applied to a b2b saas lead gen campaign that takes very long time sometimes months to reach statistical significance okay uh how do you uh, see mab is being applied to a lead generation campaign right yeah so okay so i'll uh, i'll make whatever assumptions that i can and uh, maybe anshul you can add to it later so what i personally feel that if you have multiple sources of lead generation and you want to divert budget to the best sources of lead generation so suppose you if you have 100 dollars for the sake of simplicity and you have multiple sources of lead generation and you want to optimize 
those uh, sources of lead generation uh, you want to optimize what you can do with that budget that is exactly an mab use case and what you can do is that you can run an mab on those different sources you can set a goal on what leads are being converted and you can let that mab algorithm handle that budget it will automatically test out which uh, which the sources and which routes of uh, lead generation are performing the best and then divert more traffic budget towards those lead generating sources so yeah that will be a very valid uh, mab use case anshul do you uh, have any yeah, yeah. Uh, at a very broad level i think this problem in two aspects if there are like two strategies you have of generating lead and uh, eventually you want to decide that which strategy is more suitable in a really long run and your business ultimately or future decisions are going to be dependent upon that strategy then ab test is, test is actually your use case but if your objective is to no matter whatever strategy is my i want to generate as many leads as possible in this particular time then you should go for nab at a really broad level i think this is how i would decide which algorithm would suit my need but do you have I yeah sorry mm -hmm. sorry please yeah ishan, ishan i was asking you only like in, is there any yeah. yeah i personally feel that the one way that mab might be useful if you really don't care about statistical significance in that use case is just sort of set it and forget type of a thing that you have multiple sources in an mab you can plug in different sources even later as they come along and it will just uh, optimize uh, the budget for the best of those lead generating sources so yeah all right uh, i hope that answers your question ayula if not please feel free to reach out uh, to ishan or anshul on linkedin and they'll be more than happy to uh, to delve deeper into it and help you understand that uh, so i think this uh, this will be the last question we picked today uh, this question is by uh, pranshu bhatnagar how scalable are mabs compared to ab testing or other ml based methods uh what are the average training inference times for a sample recommendation interesting can you repeat the question once again shanaz sorry so i'll i'll uh, i'll repeat the first part first and then we can move on to the second part of the question yeah, yeah. uh the first part is how scalable are mmbs compared to ab testing or other ml based methods interesting so uh if by scalability we mean more variations then mabs are scalable ab tests are not if uh, really if uh, by scalability we mean that then yes if by scalability and that should not be the case if by scalability we mean that whatever winners come out of the campaign and can be deployed to a larger audience or not then i think mabs are not scalable so like we told that the future the insights that we get out of mabs are not future proof so you cannot do that uh, the insights that you get out of an mab suppose you run an mab on a small subset of your visitors and then you want to scale that uh, result that came out to a broader audience in that sense mabs are not scalable i think anshul what do you think i you know actually like class of use case problems I, rather than actually L it's not right i would say that to compare actually computations of these two uh, problems in a way that ab is actually like a use case specific ab and mab are different different use cases uh, algorithm yeah. complexity is altogether like if we would compare to same algorithms of like same which are serving the same use case then it would make more sense i think yeah i think from a time efficiency manner uh, scalability is not an issue ab tests and mabs are equally time efficient actually so yeah, yeah. and what All is right, the so the part? second part yeah yeah the second part is uh, what are the average training slash inference times uh, for a sample recommendation interesting what does transfer mean by sample recommendation so it's not like like in case so i think that i i kind of understand where is coming from so maybe he has this mind of frequentist approach like a traditional which i'm at uh, ml approach where you expect that you have a large amount of data and then only it makes sense to apply an algorithm ml algorithm to it now uh, this is because we are using a bayesian strategy we are incorporating that uncertainty about the system that when you have less data you would 
always get a distribution that of unsurety. Uh, whatever result that you will get, it will always be in a certain range. And so, in terms of sample wise, there's no as because you are applying Bayesian, uh, you are incorporating that knowledge that you have low samples. So things are going to work out in this Bayesian world. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I I think that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Please go. That that wraps up uh, today's webinar. Thank you so much, uh, Ishan and Anshul. Uh, we'll not be taking any more questions due to the lack of time, but uh, Ishan and Anshul will be happy to answer your questions on MAB or anything conversion rate optimization on uh, LinkedIn. And yeah. feel free to reach out. And thank you so much for attending this, for uh, always being part of uh, PW webinars. We try to we try to give out as much insightful, uh, you know, information as we can uh, based on our everyday practice and uh, and from experts all across the world. So thank you so much for attending uh, the webinar and thank you so much Ishan and Anshul for doing this with us today. Thank you, Shanaz, for organizing this. We are like more than thankful, actually. Thank you so much.